You know, good topwater rods are, are really critical. So if I'm fishing targets, you know, if I'm throwing around boat docks and real precise, need to make really precise casts, you know, I'm gonna use a shorter rod. And you wanna use uh, an action that's, that's designed to, with some fast tip just for that particular bait. So, you know, I'll use a 610, medium heavy, the same rod I throw a jerk bait. If I'm gonna throw this around boat docks and I'm not throwing, you know, making super long casts for the most part, I wanna have a shorter rod for accuracy. Uh, you know, day in, day out, I love this popper on a seven foot medium action. It's got a, you know, it's got a real fast tip. You know, this is a lose, it's my GC3. And I mean, you can see this, if I hold it off, I mean, this rod is super fast um, and real soft. That helps you throw the bait real well. It makes it real accurate. Um, around targets and it also helps the bait walk real good having that soft tip when you're popping that uh, that bait back and forth and working it in the water it's going to make it a lot easier to get that bait to to walk back and forth and, and get that good blooping sound so targets you know a shorter rod if i'm throwing these big stick baits out in the open and accuracy is not important i throw the same type of thing but uh, a bigger version this is a 7.4 it's a medium heavy it's got that same super fast tip to it um, you know, I, I want to have that flexibility that makes it make the uh, work the bait very easy. I can still be pretty accurate with this with this rod, but I've got a lot more leverage to make, you know, a really long cast. And with this uh, sexy dog, I mean, I can throw it 60 yards very easily. So I'm going to spool it up. I like, you know, 50 pound braid uh, and I'll, you know, make sure that I'm using green braid and I'll color the last little bit just so the fish don't see it. But even on that super long cast, it's super easy to keep this bait working on top. These sexy dogs are probably the easiest bait in the world to, to work. All you gotta do is pull the rod tip towards it just like you would a jerk bait and point it back at it, just a short little you know, one foot twitch and it just makes that bait go back and forth. It's a very easy thing to do. I throw them always on a high speed reel because you're always working the bait with the the rod tip, you shouldn't be moving your bait with the reel itself. You should always be moving the bait with your rod tip. The reel's just picking up slack. So use the fastest reel that you can, that you can possibly get just for that reason. And uh, you know, you can go to lighter braid. Some guys like it. I like 50 because I can really wind up and bomb that bait out there and, and I just don't get any backlashes. It's got big enough diameter um, that, it, that it casts real easy. If you start using you know, some smaller braid, 20 or 30 pound braid, uh, you know, it doesn't extend my distance that much and it's a lot fussier to cast with. Now the popper, it's totally different. This is the one technique that I am still adamant about using monofilament on. You know, braid, uh, it does float, but I just have a hard time keeping the action of that. And it, because it's a slower moving bait in the water, I don't want to have uh, a line that's easy for the fish to see. So I use a green monofilament. Usually I'm going to use 14 pound. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, if I'm using the bigger popper and, or I'm fishing around heavy targets, I may go up to 17 or 20, but 14 is my go-to uh, for this, especially this Splash Junior. You don't want to use too light a line because it's going to want to start sinking on you. You don't want your line sinking in front of that popper. You want to keep it on top. That's what gives it that really good, lively side-to-side -side action. What I love about this little finesse popper is how lively it is when you're working. So when you've got the right combination of a nice soft tipped rod that has some backbone to it, you can be deadly accurate and throw it around targets and really get that bait having the maximum action where it just really walks back and forth. It's very erratic and they just can't help but come up and swallow it. You know, the time to throw a top water uh, really varies. And I, and I know, you know, seasonally it can make a difference. You know, when you've got bass, in that shallow zone around targets, and that's the spawn and the post spawn when you really see that a lot. I'll throw top water all day long. As soon as it hit the water, good one. <laughs> it's just the perfect place to throw that popper. You know, I, I love poppers around targets. You know, if you can, whether it's a grass flat, and I got a little of both right here. It's just a good solid fish right there. But there's some pencil reeds there and some holes, and then there's a lot of scattered grass on this flat right here. So anytime you can get this near something, that subtle, you know, action that it has really just makes a, a big difference. So I'm just gonna get it there, let it sit there. I mean, that one hit it 
I barely let it hit, popped it one time, and he just exploded on it. Obviously landed close to him. And the information Bash University provides isn't your basic run-of-the-mill fishing video. This is specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly.